What's going on everybody? This is Dave from Steel City Drones. Today, we're talking about a brand new camera sensor for the Matrice 300 and Matrice 350. And it has some very unique camera features to it that I was really chomping at the bit to be able to go ahead and get my hands on. Now, before I get into this, I just wanna remind everybody, we have a brand new Instagram page that we're uploading daily content to. So you'll see what we're doing and what we're up to well before you see anything on YouTube. So if you really wanna take a look at what we're doing, please check out and follow our Instagram page. So if you're not familiar with who CZI is, CZI makes enterprise sensors and accessories for the DJI Enterprise line of drones. We've been testing their products for over two years. It's very high quality stuff, and we're excited to see what they've done with this camera. So what this camera is, it has a zoom camera, it has a thermal camera, plus a rangefinder, and also an IR spotlight, all in one. So previously, we've never been able to get all this into one package. Plus, it has some very unique things that we have never seen before. This is the first true HD resolution thermal camera out there that's going to give us a lot of new zoom capabilities on the thermal side that we've never seen before. And of course, we had to go ahead and test this to everything that it's capable of doing to give you a very comprehensive review. We're also gonna compare this to other cameras that we've been able to use in the past. We're gonna compare this to the H20T, the H20N, and we did a lot of side-by-side -side comparisons with the Matrice 30 camera, which is very similar to the H20T in many ways. So we have a lot of things going on with here. So let's go out and this basically, the first question you may be asking is now, what true applications are going to really going to want to use something like this? So the first thing is, for anybody who's in public safety doing search and rescue, if you're doing search grids and you're setting up a map and you have a site that has a lot of change in elevation, where you may have three, four, five, maybe 600 feet change in elevation, if you're not going to go and use terrain following, you're gonna to wanna to set up your mapping mission to be able to fly about 100 to 125 feet higher than the highest elevation so that the drone doesn't obviously run into it. So if you have that much difference in elevation in the valley areas of where you need to search, that could be five to 600 feet away. And when we're going ahead and really looking at our H20T camera, you know, we're really kind of on a borderline of about 200, 250 feet for resolution because it has all digital zoom. With the H20N, they definitely improved that. There's a really good 16X functionality out of that. But I really think, again, that's going to really start limiting us around 400 feet. Now we got something that's going to go ahead and push that even further. So we obviously wanted to go ahead and test that out completely. So before we start showing you some of the tests, let's go over some of the specifications on the thermal side of this camera. We have 1280 by 1024 lines of resolution. That's double the resolution on any of the current line of drones out there. Currently, they all are at 640 by 512 lines of resolution. That's everything from the Mavic 3 Enterprise all the way up to the Zen Moose H20T and the N plus the Matrice 30T as well. So we're doubling the resolution on this camera. The thermal camera on here is equivalent to a 56 millimeter. So it's not very wide and it also starts at, at four times zoom. So we cannot go one to one or two to one. It starts at four times zoom and goes all the way up to 30 times zoom. Also, as of right now, this cannot do isotherms, but it is a radiometric camera that is compatible with the different products out there like FLIR tools. So you don't have to worry about converting your images 
if you're going to go ahead and use something like Fleur Tools, that's what like currently on the Zen Moose H20T in the N, we have to go ahead and convert those proprietary files to something that like Fleur Tools would use. We don't have to do that with this camera. So we're started out about 350 feet away. And we're going to go ahead and zoom in at different levels here of what you're going to see about 200, 250 feet high and about 350 feet away. Now on the other side of that, we're going to compare the Matrice 30T with that. As you're going to see, the resolution really can't come in to that focal area very well. So now we're going to move in closer about 200 feet away and then we're going to show you what the C30 can do at the different zoom capabilities. So we're going to start out at four times and work our all the way up to 30 times. Now we're going to go ahead, do the same thing with the Matrice 30T and you're going to see again, we are very limited in resolution. And now we're going to bring it in about 100 feet away. And now you're seeing some of the data that we were able to capture with the C30 at 100 feet away. And you can see the resolution is absolutely stunning. Very high quality detail. Now we're going to bring in the M30T. We are nowhere near what the C30 can do. In fact, when we go ahead and even bring the Matrice 30T all the way into 50 feet, the resolution even at 50 feet is nowhere near even at what the resolution quality is with the C30 at 200 feet away. So you're, again, you can see a lot of that where we are with this. Now we're going to go ahead and switch over to a search and rescue type of an example where I have my son out in the field and he's just playing, going ahead and playing some soccer. Now you can see where we are when we're actually 250 meters away and we're 400 feet high. So as you can see, the quality and the resolution that far away is outstanding. So complying with part 107, I really couldn't go higher than 400 feet. But again, having that away 200 meters, you can really see we could go a lot higher than 400 feet if necessary without any problems. So to conclude on the thermal side, that is actually the strength of this camera, what it can do. There's nothing else on the market that even comes close to that. Now I'm sure that's, you know, technology is going to catch up to where everything else we're going to have for different sensors. But this is the first camera that can do this. Let's go ahead and talk about the night features option that this has. And now what you're seeing is an example, a perfectly pitch black situation and what you're seeing with the night option turned on with no IR spotlight. Now we're going to test it with the IR spotlight on here. Again, the IR spotlight is going to be great for public safety that want to do far away surveillance. Now this is an 850 nanometer spotlight and CZI specs it that it works up to 400 meters. We're going to go ahead and we're going to start off at 88 meters away. And as you can see, the detail is really good at that level. And because of the zoom capability on this camera, we're able to really zoom in on a very tight spotlight in a, in a smaller area and get very good resolution and picture definition. So then we went back to 300 meters away. And at 300 meters away, we really still had very sharp detail in the picture with, that was very, very usable. So that 300 meters away, that's about 1,200 feet, we still have something that's very, very good. Now, what we did see the limit was when we went over a little over 400 meters away. That was really the, the limit of where we could find usable data. So again, when you need to use a, one, a night light that has a lot of different features and functionality to it, this is really the camera sensor to use. Now, we're gonna go ahead and talk about the regular zoom camera. This reminds me a lot of the older Z30 camera that DJI had. Now, I would say it's a little better than that, 
but it is four megapixels. The dynamic range to me seems about the same. This also has a 30 optical time zoom. That is very, very good. Again, that's gonna be better than the Zenmuse 820 series cameras that have 23 times optical zoom. So up to 30 times optical zoom, this camera was really, really good. We wanted to do our license plate check. Again, when we like comparing apples to apples from different cameras, and as far as the zoom capability goes, we really like using and testing how far away can we really see and zoom in on a license plate that is readable. And in my opinion, we really started seeing about a thousand feet away was the limitation of that. And again, that is really uh, being a little generous. I would say somewhere between 900 and a thousand feet away is its limit. So how do these results compare to the other cameras we've tested? The Mavic 2 Enterprise Advance has a range limit of about 85 feet. The Mavic 3 Enterprise has a range limit of about 300 feet. The Matrice 30 has a range limit of 900 feet. The Matrice 300 with the H20N has a range limit of about 600 feet. The Matrice 300 with the H20T won the comparison with a range limit of 1,500 feet. Now, the one area on the zoom camera side that we had a little difficulty with was that the camera did drift. Now, we talked to CZI about that, and they said that they're going to go ahead and talk to engineering. This is really the first generation firmware and everything with this camera. So I'm sure there's going to be improvements made with that, but we did see a bit of drift on there. Anywhere over 70 times zoom, we had some amount of drift. And obviously it can go up to 300 times digital zoom. So over 70 times, not to say that it was unmanageable by any means, but I would say it's a little more than I would like to see. You can see now a cell tower that we're able to zoom in at, at 300 meters away, and it still looks very good. So the detail is really good, and especially when we can go ahead and stay in at 30 times optical zoom, we can get really, really good imagery off of the, the zoom camera. Also, the zoom camera is equivalent to a 56 millimeter lens. And also, it will do one-to-one. -one. So that's why it really doesn't need a wide camera. But obviously, it's not a wide format as far as the actual focal length. So we got 56 millimeters to start off with, one-to-one. -one, whereas with the other cameras, they start at two-to-one or even higher. So that's something to consider as well. But you can see at one to one, it's definitely wide enough from what I saw from my opinion. The last thing that we wanted to go ahead and evaluate on the zoom side is how far away can we really go ahead and see and monitor different things as far away as possible. So what we did was we wanted to zoom in on this shopping center that you're seeing right here. Now this is 1.3 miles away. So you can see, you can get some very good information from over a mile away. And again, that's gonna be really good for like a hazmat situation where you don't wanna get too close and chance it if like to say there's a major chemical spill. You know, in Pittsburgh, we had a, a really nasty train derailment not that long ago and something like that, that would have been a perfect situation where we could keep and keep the drone away safely not affect anything and still be able to really see that very well at nighttime. And then you would still have, and if it's at nighttime, you'd be able to go ahead and use the zoom night features on this camera. A couple other very cool features that I want to mention is it has a defogging feature on it so that if you're flying out in higher humidity and your lens is starting to fog up, it will take care of that. Also, it has a heated glass element on here. So if you are flying and you're getting some water mist around that lens, that heated glass feature can take care of that as well. So overall, I am very pleased with this camera as far as being 
a all-in-one camera for a lot of public safety needs out there. And there's going to even be other people than public safety that need, like, say, electric companies that want to keep the drone farther away from high voltage power lines, for example, and you can go ahead and really zoom in on that. Again, my opinion, the strength of this is the thermal camera and its resolution. Opinions are subjective, but I wanted to give you actual data and not to say, I feel this is better, or I'm gonna say, go buy something. So when you're looking at what to buy, you know exactly what you're looking at and what factors to be able to take into account. So if you have any questions, let us know. We're gonna be putting this on our website and selling it. We always recommend CZI for everything that they do, and this is another great addition to what they have. Again, please follow our Instagram page, check it out. And also, if you haven't yet, please help us grow the channel, hit the subscribe button. We're gonna give you more content more frequently. So thanks again for watching. We'll talk to you soon. Steel City Drone Flight Academy offers the most comprehensive on-site commercial remote pilot training program in the United States. Our team of professional drone instructors has more than 30 years of combined experience and have trained more than 1,000 students to fly drones commercially. We offer on-site training anywhere in the United States. Our most popular training package is a four-day commercial program. Day one, it's an introduction to drones day, an introduction to flying day, equipment familiarization. Day two is all day flying. It's our advanced flying. You learn up to 15 different practice exercises. You learn how to fly manually without any automation. And you're gonna be amazed by the things that you can do by the end of the day. The third day is what we call advanced ground school. We teach you everything that the part 107 test does not. And that's gonna be everything, nuts and bolts from a theory standpoint on how to be able to do flight missions. If you wanna really sharpen up how to fly drones commercially and professionally, this is a day that you cannot miss. The fourth day is a commercial applications day where we're taking the first three days, putting it all together, and we're doing simulated training missions that you would normally do for commercial flying. What sets us apart from other training schools is that we teach you how to fly manually without any automation so that you're prepared to respond to the worst type of situation a pilot can experience. For more information about Steel City Drones training services, please visit our website at steelcityflightacademy.com.